You ready to learn how to do some leak detection? That's what we're doing today. My name's Morgan. I'm with Onnit Plumbing, the American plumber, and I've got the equipment. I want to show you kind of the different ways that you can find a mystery water leak. So we do have the hydrogen. I've got a Jacobs 430 hydrogen sniffer right here. This basically will pick up the hydrogen molecules and display them on an LCD screen. I've also got the General Wire Gen LE, like the Gen Ear. This is an acoustic leak detector. This is supposed to basically be a really high powered stethoscope and allow you to hear the water leak through your ears. I think this thing's actually kind of a joke and a rip off. I would not buy it and we'll get into that later. Starting out though, what I've found with leak detection is if you're a plumber or you're knowledgeable, most of the time you don't even need that equipment to find the leak. I'm being serious. Since I've been offering leak detection, I hardly ever have to pull out the equipment. Now when you need it, you do need it. But let's start with the simple things. Step number one, you're gonna wanna check some obvious places that things leak. Most common, I would say, is a toilet fill valve. There's a couple ways to do this. You can add some dye into the tank and see if the bowl turns blue. You can look for water running down. You can listen. But a lot of times you'll have leaks that are literally just the toilet. And we've got other options to try before you go into the full-blown hydrogen leak detection. Now, how do you know if you have a water leak? That's a common question. Well, usually if you're on a city, if you're on city water, you're gonna have a high water bill. They're gonna, the city might even notify you and say, hey, you're using more water than normal. And that's a good indication that you've got a water leak. Now the second situation is maybe you're on a well and you don't have a meter. It's gonna be a little bit harder to tell. But if you're around where your pressure tank's at, you'll hear it kick on and kick off randomly without you running any water. And well, that means water's going somewhere because the pressure's going up and down and kicking on and running somewhere and you're not doing it. So there's a leak somewhere. Um, you know, the other option is maybe you just see a wet spot in the ground, which is common. So these are things that could indicate that you have a water leak. Now. Right off the bat, what we're gonna start with is if you've only got a well house um, and it goes straight to your property, you can shut the valve at your well and then hook up a pressure gauge that you can get at Home Depot to a hose bib and watch to see if the pressure drops. Now in this particular situation, we've got my shop here and we have an isolation valve to isolate just this section so that I don't have to energize the entire way back down to my well, which would be like 300 feet. And one thing with leak detection, the more narrowed down you can get, the better. So what you'd wanna do is break your system in multiple points. So if you didn't know, if you knew you had a leak and you didn't know where, you're gonna run this test on the whole system. And then if you do have a valve somewhere that splits the system in half, you'll run the, the test on the other half and you'll narrow it down to which section has the water leak. That way you're not, when you do get to hydrogen, you're not wasting your time using a bunch of extra hydrogen that's unnecessary. So as you can see, we got 38 pounds right there. As long as nobody runs anything, we'll be good. So 38 pounds. Now we're gonna go over here to the isolation valve and now we're gonna make that a closed loop system. And I'll explain in a minute. This is kind of a farm property. Got our pond here and our sheep. Beautiful place here in Southern Oregon. Okay, so this valve, which is kind of overgrown right now, this one isolates. I know it's funky plumbing. That isolates that section of the system that we just put a hose bib on. So now it's either gonna hold 
at that 38 pounds and we know there is no leak or it's gonna drop pressure. And if it drops pressure, we know there's a leak. See, this part of the system is still alive. So we're not even checking the house right now. We're only checking this portion that goes from that shop to that box. So isolation is a huge component of leak detection. Once you've determined it's not a drippy faucet, it's not a leaky toilet, now we're isolating this leg of the system. And now we're gonna give it about five to 10 minutes and we're gonna watch this gauge. Right now we're still at about 38 pounds. So we'll give it five minutes. Hydrogen and acoustic leak detection equipment is very good for leaks that are on like a slab, like a concrete slab like this. And even that's not perfect. So if you get a hydrogen reading in like say this location, you're gonna wanna drill a rotary hole through that in a few locations to pinpoint where it might be. You gotta let the customer know. I mean, you don't wanna be digging a bunch of mystery holes in concrete. So that's, that's one way that you have to do it to narrow it down. Uh, the other thing is I believe they go hand in hand. A lot of guys will use just acoustic. I'm not that good and a lot of guys will um, kind of just lean towards hydrogen uh, for the detection. I think they work hand in hand because when you energize it with hydrogen, you, a lot of times you'll hear a lot louder bubbling and noises, which makes the acoustic stuff work better. So I think they work kind of hand in hand and unfortunately they're not cheap. The Jacobs sniffer cost about four grand and a decent Severin leak detection can cost anywhere from four to 11,000 for an acoustic, so not cheap. So it's been about six, seven minutes and it looks like we are dropping pressure. Normally I would tell somebody that they do have a leak. This leak is very tiny and insignificant. Um, if they wanted me to proceed, we would go ahead and do a hydrogen test to see if we could find it. But just looking at how long that gauge is holding up, if it's barely dropped any pressure and you know, almost 10 minutes is probably a pretty tiny little leak. So that being said, in this situation, we're gonna go ahead and fire it up. So you're gonna need an adapter, which you can get from your local air supply company. Um, for us, it's industrial source around here. Tighten that on. And this is gonna be a pretty typical looking connection. This is your gauge to regulate how much pressure you want running through. And from what I understand, starting out at anywhere from 20 to 30 pounds, a lot of times we'll get it to what they call purge or flow. And uh, if that doesn't work, I've heard you can mix the water with the air and run it a little bit above operating pressure. So if operating pressure is 40 pounds, maybe you could go 60, 70 pounds um, to try to get it to to go so a hose bib like this is a perfect spot to go in you know there's certain applications that you can't hook up to like a frost free yard hydrant or a, a backflow valve in a lot of cases would not be a good spot to hook in and then on this side of things oh, come on. we've literally got an air hose that we hook up to with an adapter into your hose bib here. Okay, make sure you got a good seal there. And then the other side is gonna hook right in to our regulator. And first we'll open up this valve, which is telling us we're at about PSI under 2000, maybe 1600, 1800 PSI. Then we're gonna regulate up. That looks pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and fire up. So we'll open this to allow air in. So 
It's not. Now here's the PSI, so we're gonna go up to 60, 50. First thing we'll do is, a lot of times you wanna turn off the uh, toilets, anything like that. But you do wanna walk through the house, make sure you don't hear anything burping or going off. And a lot of times it is a good idea to shut off the supply valves. We're just gonna walk around the area real quick, see if we hear anything. We're not hearing anything. Sometimes you can open up a fixture to allow some of that hydrogen to get in. So we'll go ahead and just open this real quick. Try and get some of that moving. Let's go see how the gauge is doing. I don't hear anything purging. Let's go ahead and get this ready. So this is gonna come with a wand here. This is the actual important part, the sniffer that does have a pump. So once we fire up the screen, you can turn the pump on and off, very important. Otherwise it won't work right. Push that button there, a light will flash. Same here. I do like the way this is built. Seems pretty built pretty nice. So we'll let that fire up. All right, so this is preparing and loading. This is the, the monitor that connects to the sniffer here. I just bumped the pressure up to about 60 pounds. Here we go. We're gonna turn the pump on. You can barely hear it. Zero is what we want. So we're gonna kinda trace the line out here. See if we can find where this leak is at. We know there's piping coming up here. No leak there. So much. There we go. Pumps back on. We should see some reading. See that? So now it's picking up the hydrogen out of there. We're going to walk this one more time. All right, Rev, come look at it now. All right, guys. This? Okay, hold on, buddy. Excuse me. Yeah, excuse me. Let me get over there. That's way So now you can see. Yeah. Boom, one million. We're right on a leak. You can see that hydrogen coming out, making that bubbling sound. And it also helps with the acoustic. Let me see. So you can see why you kind of want to hold out for last resort on using leak detection equipment because it really is not as easy as you would think. We're, now this is the general wire. Looks like a kid's toy, Jenny or LE. And this is for the sound. Let's see if we can hear this thing. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, I can hear it. See if I can put this up to you guys. I don't know where the mic is. I can hear it with my plain ears though, so it's not that impressive. There you have it. Hopefully I helped you make up your mind on if you want to buy leak detection equipment. To be honest, I would say I, I'm, as a plumber who wanted to get into leak detection and is actually doing it, I don't know that it's worth it. Most every call that I go to ends up not even really needing leak detection, such as even this one. I didn't know for, if that joint was leaking. I suspected it because it had some like moss growing on it. But at the end of the day, I didn't need leak detection for that. I mean, we proved that the leak detection equipment can work, but at a certain point, that's expensive, man. You're spending ten to $15,000 setting up for leak detection.